There has been a lot of speculation surrounding the upcoming Amazon Razor Power TV series, the latest attempt at a Tolkien adaptation. Now, as information began revealing itself concerning the plot, source material, and casting, it started to divide the public into those who appreciate Tolkien lore, who want to see it respected and honoured as the author originally intended, and those who don't, quite simply. However, prior to any negative information being revealed, a lot of minds were relieved in the beginning to hear that Tom Shippey, a leading Tolkien scholar, was attached as a consultant on the series. However, it didn't take long for Amazon to unceremoniously fire him from his position, and much rumour had circulated the corners of the internet about the true reasons behind his removal. What this video intends to do is to now explain in a kind of condensed format why Mr Shippey is such an expert, and then it will go into details about the recent events that have shined a new light upon Amazon's dismissal of him. So therefore, in order to do this, I will be using Tom Shippey's own book called J.R.R. Tolkien, Author of the Century, as the basis of his knowledge. There are other books, of course, but this was the main book that has circulated all over the world. I just wanted to be known that prior to the creation of this video, that all the sources as of this date have been checked and verified as completely legitimate. Now, to give people a slight understanding towards the conflicting mindsets of both Amazon and Shippey, I just want you to observe the synopsis of for his very own book. So it says this, Written in a clear and accessible style, Tolkien, author of the century, reveals why all of these books, these books being The Hobbit, The Lord of the Rings, and Silmarillion, will be timeless, and shows how even such complex works such as The Silmarillion can be read enjoyably, taking issue with the uninformed criticism that has often been leveled at Tolkien and fantasy in general. The criticism element of this synopsis, I believe, is the most important element, and you will see that as the video goes along. Now, in this book, Shippey discusses at length the history of how Tolkien became the author he is known as today, recounting, in fact, the story of when Tolkien was in his home in Northmore Road, laboriously marking school certificate papers, Tolkien turned over a page to find a candidate, had mercifully left one of the pages with no writing on it, which is the best thing that can possibly happen to an examiner. And I, as in Tolkien, wrote on it, in a hole in the ground there lived a hobbit. Names always generate a story in my mind. Eventually, I thought I'd better find out what hobbits were like, for that's only the beginning. This last section of the quote, where it says, had mercifully left one of the pages, is a direct quote from letter 163 out of the letters of J.R.R. Tolkien. And as Shippey notes, this quote is also used in the only authorised biography of Tolkien by Humphrey Carpenter. So this to me demonstrates, at the very least, a more than simple basic research level in understanding Tolkien, which is unfortunately what some scholars do today. I mean, let's contrast this with the showrunners of the series, who have a tendency to use partial quotes from Tolkien to justify their positions, even when said quotes have totally different meanings. What I've just been reading out, by the way, is just the two opening pages of his book. That's something to uh, bear in mind. Shippey devotes an entire chapter of his book to Tolkien's disdain for allegory, and he quotes from multiple sources. In fact, he states that Tolkien disliked vague allegories, allegories which didn't work, though he accepted them readily in their proper place, which was either advancing an argument, or was constructing brief and personal fables. In fact, he goes into a lot of detail on various examples of the falsehood in the sign allegory to Tolkien's work. Regardless if that work is the main Middle-earth narrative, or side stories, or even associated stories like Father Giles of Ham, you see, the classic argument when Tolkien's Middle-earth stories were first being released was that the One Ring was an allegory for nuclear weapons, and, for example, a chapter in The Return of the King, which was entitled The Scoring of the Shire, is in itself an allegory for war-torn England after World War II. Both of these have been proven to be nonsense, by the way. But these are not really the examples I wish to uh, draw your attention to, they're just food for thought. Instead, I'd rather draw your eye to the nonsensical criticism that was levelled at the publication of The Lord of the Rings back in the 1950s. Such criticism, in my humble opinion, 
equates to the same idiocy that is going into the creation of the current Rings of Power TV series. For I honestly believe it is being made by people who I see as having a deep dislike for what Tolkien represented. Now what he represented, in my view, is that he cared about traditionalism, fellowship, morality, individualism over collectivism, and a type of simplicity that predates the world of industry. So in terms of this criticism that was back then, Chippy writes about Mark Roberts. Now Mark Roberts is a professor from Keele University at this time and in 1956 published his thoughts in a periodical newsletter or newspaper or whatever it might be called Essays in Criticism where he stated it as in Lord of the Rings doesn't issue from an understanding of reality which is not to be denied it is not molded by some controlling vision of things, which is at the same time, it's raison d'etre. Now, without trying to insult people's intelligence, for those who don't know what raison d'etre means, it's a French phrase that refers to a purpose for being. So in other words, this critic was stating that the Lord of the Rings is nonsense and has no basis in reality. This is of course a ridiculous statement to make and Shippy was quick to correct him. So Shippy states in the book that, Professor Roberts spoke from a simpler critical era. He was clearly trying to write Tolkien off in the language and the perspective of the then dominant F.R. Leavis. And indeed, it is true that the Lord of the Rings, like most modern fantasy, would never fit into neat succession of Leavis's great tradition. He's being sarcastic at the end of that quote, you see. So at this point in the video, I'm sure you're asking questions like, uh, What's the relevance of this with the current series that's been released? It's a fair question to ask, and I'm about to tell you what the relevance is. Yeah, so Tom Shippey is able to carefully and considerately explain why characters, scenery, and situations happen the way they are meant to happen in Tolkien's writings. He doesn't try to reevaluate, misquote, or alter the vision of the man who sat down one day, turned over a school certificate, and started writing. He is also able to identify and dissect those who attempt to lobby criticism, especially if said criticism is misplaced, but also, and in this case more importantly, he respects the work, and if changes are made to an adaption of said work, which are done with malicious intent for example, be sure that this man will have words to say about it. He is not someone who is against all adaptations or anything like that, he is not that type of purist. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been involved with Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings trilogy, of which, by the way, he is heavily featured in the appendices section on home media. It seems to me that the ring wraiths are Tolkien's most um, original and distinctive image of evil. And uh, since he's a philologist, I think we should think about the word wraith. All right, what's a wraith? Well, it's actually related to words we know. For instance, it's related to wrath, which is anger. It's related to wreath which is a twisted thing. It's related to the word writhe, which is to, you know, to twist and turn. And all these suggest that actually a wraith is uh, uh, something which is defined by shape, not by substance. Now with all this in mind, I bring you to the issues at play today. So on the one hand, we have Amazon, and they are saying he was removed from the project for violating an NDA he had with the company about not talking about the show and that he did this when speaking specifically to a German news outlet. Okay, let's bear that in mind. Now, I've read this article in full from the German news outlet. I cannot remember its name, but it will be on screen. And there is no evidence that suggests he gave any details away that were, at this point in time when it was done, unavailable to the public, nor any information that contradicts the terms of any potential NDA. Now, while NDAs are all different, of course they are, the premise is mostly the same. So basically, it will say things along the lines, if I'm gonna put it into layman's language, don't reveal any details, we as a company have not already divulged. Very, very simple. Of which, by the way, Shippy does not do in this article. Thus leading most of us to speculate, hmm, was there another reason why he was let go? This brings me very neatly to the article released by Bounding Into Comics, which is entitled, Rumor. The Lord of the Rings scholar Tom Shippey fired for telling Prime Video they were polluting the law. Now, in this article, author John F. Trent explains that fellow YouTuber George Moilo, aka George the Giant Slayer, whose YouTube channel will be linked in the description, 
has suspicions that Amazon removed Shippy from the project due to him believing that Amazon was polluting the law. I'm now beginning to believe the real reason that Tom Shippy was fired wasn't because he gave some interview to a German magazine that broke his NDA. That's, you get a slap on the wrist for that. It's because I heard from three separate sources that he would weekly tell the Bobsy twins of Payne and McKay that Prime was polluting the law. If these rumors are true, and yes, yes, I acknowledge that this is stated as a rumor, I however do believe in my own personal opinion, it is more likely that they are true than not true. Now, if that is the case, this means Amazon has willfully lied, and furthermore, in the context of this series, have no intention of honoring Tolkien's legacy. Because if they did, why would you move the leading expert if you intend to do the story justice? This only further incentivized me on a personal level to continue my commitment to dedicating my free time to bringing down this monstrosity. As this series not only represents now Tolkien's work being bastardized, but also it's evidence of a company that shall willfully lie and ruin a man's reputation because he dared to tell the truth. Which also on a personal level seems to be a regular occurrence in society these days. So in ending this video, I'm simply going to say this. I urge people to support Shippy wherever they can. Perhaps by buying this book. It's not expensive. A link is in the description of this video. Please go have a look at George the Giant Slayer's YouTube channel. That's also there in the description. Apart from that, I thank you for watching to this point. I will be back soon with new videos. So until then, bye for now.